Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Another day here for Standard. Um, really happy with some changes here I've made to the mono red deck. And before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content, dropping a comment or a like. And uh, for my, my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. You guys are the backbone of this channel, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, okay, jumping in here, made some pretty serious changes here to the mono red deck for ladder, and I've had just a ton of success. Um, I've made it all the way to like the top um, 900 mythic, and just kind of continuing to keep climbing here, so really trying to push top 250 here for the end of the month if possible. But some of the changes that I made, so I wanted to really kind of go deep on Invasion of Tarkir as much as possible. So I ended up um, adding in a full play set of Shivan Devastator, which has been really, really great. Um, shaved Godric down to two copies, and part of the reason for that is just because we don't have a lot of uh, cards that you know have bring in two permanents so godric is not quite as powerful in this deck it's still great and it's you still want to have access to it um, especially with you know like it coming out on turn three after dropping kumano faces kakazan on turn one it also does enable some pretty nutty draws here with uh, if you can kind of get it going with an invasion of tarkir um, and so it's pretty nice there so it's still a great card as a top end but i think two copies feels right and then I also went up to the full play set of four copies of Monstrous Rage. Um, even though we only have really kind of 16 creatures here, although technically it's closer to 20 since we've got Kumano faces Kakazan, um, Monstrous Rage is just a busted card, and there's really no reason not to have four copies. So really happy to have four copies. This card definitely wins games. And uh, yeah, full play set feels right. I did end up cutting down to just three copies of End the Festivities. I think it's still a really good card to have access to um, against Mono White um, Aggro and then also against Boros Convoke, which is still super present here in the, in the meta. But I feel like the games where you draw two copies are not quite... I don't know. It is weaker in a lot of matchups, and... I kind of feel like you want to see one against Boros. You really don't need to see two that often, or if you're seeing two, you're maybe kind of already losing um, if you need them to kind of win. So basically you want to just try to lean on the strategy of getting Invasion down and just destroying all of their creatures and then burning them out with dragons. And, you know, having access to maybe one and the festivities in a game is still very helpful. It can help kind of... Uh, check their gleeful demolition but at the same time um, you do have a lot of removal you got four copies of play with fire four copies of lightning strike four copies of invasion and then basically you just your plan is to flip the dragon and then just burn them out of the game which has been working pretty well so yeah really happy with this build notably this build does not have any of the i, I removed the three copies of the um the goat whatever the the one one menace thing which was cute and you know kind of nice but just i think i just ended up finding better cards for it i sort of made room for the full place of devastators which has really felt really nice and then not running phoenix chick just because i feel like it's too low impact since we have, between Monastery Swift Spear and Kumano Faces Kakazan, we have enough to do on turn one for the most part. And then on turn two, you know, you can also really set up like a 1-1 Devastator. Even a 1-1 Devastator can be really nice because if you're able to then set up um, to flip Invasion of Tarkir eventually, you know, already having that in play can help you just take over the game. So... I think we've got enough to do on turn two also between the invasions, the fugitive codebreakers, the Feldons, and the Shiv and Devastators. The deck has just been working really, really well. So all that said, the sideboard, if you are best of three, I think is in a really great place. It's been working just amazingly well. Um, it did really great in the alchemy um, 
qualifier weekend last weekend. And even though the build of that main deck is a slightly different deck, the sideboard is identical to what it is in standard. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump into some games. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. All right, opening hand looks great. Pretty much any two lander I will keep with the exception of like um, double Mishra's where we don't have, you know, at least one red mana. But even hands where you have like two Sokens ins, totally fine to keep. I've also found that like there are some situations where you might want to you know, if you have like the option of like Swift Spear versus Kamado faces Kakazan, and you also have Invasion of Tarkir in your hand, and you know they're going to be like dropping down, like Warden or something like that, there are possible turns where you might not want to always go Kamado faces Kakazan first. Maybe do Swift Spear instead in that situation, just depending. So for the most part, you know, 90% of the time you're still going to be playing Kamado faces Kakazan first, but at any rate. Okay, really nice pick up there. Now that we've got the Kumano, I'm happy to uh, use Play With Fire to get rid of Phoenix Chick, push a little bit more damage here. Especially since we have the Exile effect. So we've got three, four, eight. Yeah, I guess we just have lethal here. That works. Yeah, and there's still situations where the um, and the festivities is still decent. It can still be a fine card in the mirror match, and even sometimes against like blue white control, especially if you know they're going to be holding um, like wandering emperor, and then you can use it to get the emperor after they use it on one of your creatures. We definitely want a lightning strike here and just get rid of this thing. This thing is just nothing but trouble. Like, I've definitely been finding that, like, the key to beating Boros um, is making sure to respect their warden. 
Okay, so they're representing um, reinforcements here. So I'm just going to go ahead and Godric and then not attack with Swift Spear. Just because I don't want to trade it for half a card. Alright, so they've got Recruiter, so if they have the land, they can push for, let's see, 3, 8, 10, 12, 14, 17 if they have another creature, so we can still safely all in. What I'm thinking about doing here is going like a Devastator for 2 plus Swift Spear, and then the other option is like Sokinzen make two tokens to get this in the air. But I think Devastator is a little bit better. So let's do that instead. Oh, actually, hang on a second. Tap this mana down. We could also hold this here until, um, let's see. I think maybe I'll just do this as a one. And then just use Sokens in next turn. That way, just I can ensure that I can get them into the air if I need to. All right, so he's got Inspector. So if he has land for it, like Inspector plus Imidane's Recruiter, he's gonna be pushing, oh my God, tons of damage. If we have like two blockers here for his four fours, it'll still be three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. So we need three blockers. So I think we just push with these two. And he's got, yeah, reinforcements in hand, yeah. All right, so if we push with everything, he's got four blockers on the ground. We're getting through for two. Plus five is seven, not quite enough. Yeah, so I think we just sit here, um, just push one in the air, and then just set up for next turn.
So it looks like he's stuck on land here. So it's possible that he has another reinforcements in hand. Um, if he does, let's see, so we end of turn, hit him for five, drop him down to two. If he has five blockers, one, two, three, four, five, get him to one. So we'll have to draw off the top. Yeah, because this block's here, one of these blocks here. I think we want to, we can probably save play with fire, but let's just do lightning strike on face, just so we have enough mana to do stuff. This way these will be two power creatures, and I think, yeah, then that's going to be enough to get it done. So that should be game, even if he has reinforcements. Yeah, that's going to do it. So yeah, sometimes I guess they get stuck on land, but uh, even still, I think we were in a decent spot there. All right, opening hand looks great. Okay, so they're representing reinforcements. Given that they have reinforcements, um, don't really want to trade Swift Spear for reinforcements or half a card. So I think we just do Feldon and push. I think we should respect it. Okay, I guess it could be like mono white control, sure. Could go for Codebreaker here, but I'm kind of tempted to do like Swift Spear plus Rage. Um, I'm not sure, I guess, what kind of creatures they have. Maybe Codebreaker is better, and then just like holding Rage in case we need to push past them, but this seems like a good Rage turn. Hmm. I guess, yeah, since we've got the Lightning Strike, I think I feel okay just going Swift Spear plus Rage here. Just trying to get their life total as low as possible. Okay, lockdown number two, sure. Okay, game is lagging.
had to restart there. I don't know what, uh, yeah, it just ended up lagging out. So I think we want to just, they've already used two lockdowns. So I think we just go for code breaker number two. It looks like they have um, like get lost or something like that, I would guess. So I think just putting more creatures down seems good. Pretty soon we're gonna wanna just start using lightning strike. Just because they're getting low. Yeah, I guess we can use Lightning Strike here. Kind of want to use Devastator, but just chumping doesn't feel great. So I think we just push and then Lightning Strike face. Devastator for three. And then hopefully set up the kill next turn. I guess depending on what we draw. Vindicator's rough. That's gonna do it though. And the festivities plus lightning strike seems to be enough. Back off. Got there. All right, nice clean three and zero. Oh. Feels good. All right, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are 76% win rate, 44 wins and 14 losses. Um, so I think, yeah, with this most recent change of the deck, it's currently 5-0. and So it's 100% <laughs> win rate for the newest version of the deck. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, overall, we're going to go off this number here, 76% win rate, feeling good. For the matchups, mono red 13 and 3, so 81% against the mirror. Um, 7 and 2 against Boros, Convoke. 7 and 0 against mono white. 3 and 2 against Azorius Control. Um, 3 and 1 against Demir. 3 and 0 against mono black. 1 and 2 against Rakdos. And then it's 2 and 0 against, I guess, like undefined. Like, I guess we just didn't see enough of the deck to know. 0-2 against Esper. This might be like Esper mid-range, Esper control, just maybe like a mix. 2-0 uh, against Golgari. 1-1 one one against Sultai, Ramp, Slash, Combo Nonsense. 2-0 against Gruul, and then 0-1 against Selesnya Enchantments. So yeah, overall very happy. And we'll see you here in the next one. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much again for supporting. Appreciate you. Thank you.